page 12 of math induction number 18. So um, we are going to first um, find some derivatives of this expression here and we'll see that um, it creates a pattern. So the first derivative of this is going to be, we're going to use product rule, right? So first we'll leave the first factor uh, by alone and we'll take the derivative of the second factor. And then we'll take uh, the derivative of the first factor, and then we'll leave the first second factor. Um, so we got that. So that's the first uh, derivative. And uh, let's factor out an e to the negative x, which is a common factor. We'll get 1 minus x minus 2, which is equal to e to the negative x. Um, minus x minus 1. Okay, and then uh, the second derivative, let's see, one thing we could do to make this a little easier, we could factor out the negative, negative e to the negative x, x plus 1. So now we'll take the derivative of this. First, we'll leave the first factor alone, and we'll take a derivative of the second factor. Then we'll... Um, take a derivative of the first factor and we'll leave the second factor alone, product rule again. And then uh, we'll factor out your e to the negative x and we'll get x plus 1 minus 1. So it'll just be e to the negative e, uh, x e to the negative x. And then the third derivative would be um, x e to the negative x, take the derivative of the second factor, then we leave, uh, then we take the derivative of the x, we get that, and we factor out the e to the negative x, and we get 1 minus x. And the fourth derivative would be uh, leave the first factor alone and take the derivative of the second factor, so negative 1. And then we'll take a derivative of the first factor. And we'll leave the first factor alone, or the second factor alone. Then we'll, ex so this will be uh, plus minus plus. So this would be, uh, if we factor out e to the negative x, it'll be x e to the negative x, x minus 2. Okay, and hey, that looks a lot like this, doesn't it? We got this, then we have this, then we have this, then we have this, and then we have this. I've now arranged all the derivatives in a similar format um, just to point out like what's going on here. Do you see how like the negative sign comes in on alternate derivatives? Um, the, um, the added number here starts out as 2, then it goes to 1, then it's 0, then it's negative 1, then it's negative 2. So, um, yeah, so let's try to like write a expression to um, express this uh, sequence. So we could say f um, derivative n is equal to negative 1 to the n because it alternates negative signs. And for f of 0, it's positive. And we have x plus 2, and then we subtract Oops. We subtract uh, n each time because on the first one uh, it's x plus 2, on the second one it's x plus 2 minus 1. So on, on the uh, this one here. Okay, so I think this works. Now we are going to try to prove it using mathematical induction. So our um, 
P of n is that uh, the derivative uh, that, you know, f is equal to e to the negative x, x plus 2. So if f equals that, then the derivative, the nth derivative of that is equal to negative 1 to the n, x plus 2 minus n. For uh, n is uh, a positive integer. So of course the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set n is equal to 1 because that's the first index and um, then we'll have um, f of 1 is equal to negative e to the negative x, x plus 1, like we calculated above, right? And um, let's check the formula. So that's the right-hand side. And the left-hand side is going to be negative 1 to the 1, x plus 2 minus 1. Let's see if that's right. So it would be negative. Oh, we, I, ooh, I forgot something. Oopsie. I forgot that I have the e to the negative x multiplied times here, right? e to the negative x. So this is equal to negative 1 x plus 1 e to the negative x. And they are equal. Okay, so therefore p of 1 is true. If p of k is true, then, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to rewrite this expression here using n equals k. So we're going to have negative 1 k x plus 2 minus k e to the negative x. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to write the derivative. So the derivative, so the f of x equals blah, blah, blah. We're going to, you just consider the, the first expression, right? The, the, the nth derivative, or the kth derivative, sorry, the kth derivative of that is going to equal that expression. Okay, so we assume that's true. Let me improve my writing here. Okay, um, and we'll put parentheses around these. Okay, now let's try to write a expression in k plus one that goes with this. Into any more space. Okay, so the k plus one expression would be the k plus 1th derivative is equal to, and I'm just going to take the derivative of this expression. So it'll be negative 1 uh, to the k. That doesn't change, right? When we take the derivative, if it's negative, it stays negative. If it's positive, it stays positive. Uh, then I'm going to do product rule, and the first time I'm going to let the first uh, expression b, and then I'm going to take the derivative of the second expression, the second um, factor, and then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to take the derivative of the first factor, which would be 1. Oh, let me put this out front. Okay. So it'll be 1, and then I take, I, I leave the second factor alone. Okay. So let's see. So this Let's see, if we, um, let's factor out a negative 1 from here, because we know that we want to have a negative 1k plus 1, okay? So let's do that. We're going to factor out a negative 1 from here, and then I'll end up with, oops, x2 minus k minus 1. So this is equal to, x plus 2 minus k plus 1. And I think we've proven it.
right? Because the original expression has x plus 2 minus n. x plus 2 minus, instead of n, we have k plus 1. And instead of n here, we have k plus 1. So it worked. Now we just need to make it fit in this very small space. OK. So now I'm going to say thus, the k plus 1th derivative of that function. So the function is blah, blah, blah. Right? And the k plus 1th derivative is equal to this thing here. Make it smaller. If, and now we're going to put the original kth derivative expression, which was here, negative 1 to the k, x plus 2 minus k, e to the negative x. So since p1 is true and pk plus 1 is true whenever pk is true, then pn is true for uh, n is a uh, positive energy. Okay, that's it for that one. On to the last problem. Okay, 25F2, uh, number 14. This is in the uh, probability section. So uh, this isn't a um, mathematical induction uh, proof, but it uh, it's similar to the techniques used in it, so I saved this problem too. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, they give us the uh, probability formula for um, x occurrences of a binomial distribution. And um, then they say, uh, if you know that this is true, it's kind of like we assume this is true. It's like the k uh, base, uh, not the base case, but the uh, step case. And then if you know that's true, then try to prove that this case is true, which is kind of like the k plus 1 case. So um, Let's uh, write out this case. So if we have the probability of x plus 1, we're going to take the left side, which is just this part, and we're going to eventually show that it's like this side. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, use the uh, probability formula for uh, binomial distribution, except instead of x, we're going to put in x plus 1, right? So we're going to do everything exactly the same, except we're going to put in x plus 1 p x plus 1. Now just like in binomial distribution what we want to do is we want to <clears throat> we want to make it look as much like possible as like this so that we can replace it with p of x okay so let's see so remember what um, let's see oh you know one thing that we should do is we should uh, break this down so this is uh, n chooses x plus 1 if you break down n chooses x plus 1, it's n factorial divided by n minus x plus 1 factorial oops, times x plus 1 factorial. <clears throat> and then the rest of it is like this. 1 minus p x plus 1. And uh, let's just check out what this looks like. If we break down the n chooses x, what does that look like? n factorial, n minus x factorial, and um, x factorial. p n minus x, uh, 1 minus p to the x. OK. So looking at this now, um, let's try to make it look as much like this as possible so we can substitute in p of x. So for example, p of n minus x minus 1, instead of that, we're going to write p of n minus x, and then we're going to put p of negative 1. We're going to break it apart. And then same thing with this one. We're going to break this down into 1 minus p to the x and 1 minus p. 
And uh, let's see, the top of this uh, n chooses x plus 1 is fine. It's n factorial, just like in the other one. Uh, let's try to um, change x plus 1 factorial into x factorial. x plus 1 factorial uh, is basically the same as x plus 1 times x factorial, right? So we just broke this down into this. And uh, this, n minus x minus 1 factorial is like n minus x factorial. And then we put um, n minus x up here. If we do that, then do you see how these would cancel out? And you would end up with uh, n minus x minus 1 factorial on the bottom? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to identify everything that's here. We're going to identify here. So this, uh, this, 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 and this. Okay, so let's replace the green parts with p of x. And the rest of it we'll just leave. So n minus x divided by x plus 1 times p inverse, which is 1 over p, 1 minus p. Okay, now we'll go back, and then we replace the green parts with p of x. Does that look like this? n minus x, do I back? It does. We did it. Okay. Um, where p of 0 equals p. Okay, p of 0 equals and just to make sure, we could make sure that p of 0 really is equal to p to the n. So we'll do that. We'll do n chooses 0, p to the n minus 0 times 1 minus p to the 0. So this is 1. This is 1. So p to the n. Okay, so we verified that too. Now let's do b. So b says, okay, n equals 5 and p equals 1 half. Find the probability values for 0, 1, 2, blah, 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 all the way to 5. Okay, so p of 1 would equal to n chooses 1, p of n minus 1, and n is 5, so I can just fill that in. 5 chooses 1, p of 5 minus 1, um, 1 minus p to the 1. 1 minus p to the 1. So that's equal to, 5 chooses 1 is 5. Uh, p to the 4th, 1 minus p. Okay? So that's the probability of 1. Probability of 2 is equal to 5 chooses 2, p of 5 minus 2, 1 minus p to the 2. So that's, if I choose this 2 is 10, p cubed, 1 minus p squared. p to the 3 is, 5 chooses 3, p of 5 minus 3, 1 minus p cubed equals um, 10, p squared, 1 minus p cubed. P4 is equal to 5 chooses 4, p to the 5 minus 4, 1 minus p to the 4. So that's 5 chooses 4 is 5, p to the 1st, 1 minus p to the 4. And p to the 5th, p5 is equal to 1 times 1 minus p to the fifth. So it's equal to 1 minus p to the fifth. Oh, they gave us p. <laughs> they gave us p. It's 1 half. So let's uh, simplify that a little bit. OK, so this one is 5 times 1 half to the fifth. 1 half to the 5th is 1 over 30 seconds, so it's 5 30 seconds. This one would be 
10, 30 seconds. Do you see how both P and one minus P when P is a half are a half. So we just end up with like Pascal's triangle formulas here. Get five divided by 32, 10 divided by 32, 10 divided by 32, five divided by 32 and one divided by 32. Okay, is that it? I did forget to figure out p to the n, p to the zero. Um, that would be one half to the fifth, which would be one over 32. Also. Okay, that's it.